But what I didn't know is the skateboard went credit carded him right in the ass Shut crack. Up. <laughs> so he got he got ejected <laughs> from a credit card in the ass. That shot him back over onto his stomach. That was supposed to be a knee slide. <laughs> We're good. <clears throat> Ready, set, go. Ready, set. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Ellis Show. Not in the Jason Ellis Show studios. I know a guy. So I made a call because I decided that these guys need to skate. And obviously they want to because they're action sports. Uh, guys. I've had a burning desire for 43 years that I've finally been able to quench. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what I was waiting for. So I thought, why not come down to the Tony Hawk ramp and use Tony Hawk's studio and get pointers from the great Tony Hawk on how to <laughs> skateboard. And you guys did really well. Thank you. Yeah. When I've, I say, I've been told that I'm quite gnarly. You are gnarly. You're pretty gnarly. Yeah. yeah you heard, was, you heard right on that. Yeah. <laughs> if there's one word I had for, for what you did, it was definitely gnarly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it sucks the best one wasn't even on camera. Mm. <laughs> the one where the board went up your butthole? That was the one, yeah. What makes that the best one? Um, I feel like if you told people, like, Kevin made some very, very unimpressive trick today. But then he did this stupid thing where he got tangled up in the board and then it went up his ass. People were like, oh, show me the ass one. Yeah. It's best in the worst way, for sure. Yeah. It was one of the better tricks I've that, ever seen. We call that the credit card. You got credit card. Yeah. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah. You got, got credit denied. carded in a way that was so avoidable. That was the part of, like, you kicked your board and it went spinning away down the ramp and then you ran after it <laughs> and just jumped and caught it with your anus hole. <laughs> <laughs> It's and, all true. Yeah, no, yeah. we don't have video of it. It so didn't can, seem can you to be do necessary. The, can you do the blow-by-blow? Because blow? I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I saw you kick the board away, and I feel like I know what that means. So I, too, was very surprised. What was that trick When called? you ran after it. Oh, it I have no like idea. So you've never done that before? He sent it spinning like a skimboard. Like, he yeah. kicked it as if it was a skimboard in front of him. And then he tried to line up when it was going to go straight and jump on it. And that didn't work out. Yeah. I actually kind of used to be able to do that. Like you step yeah. off the board, use your heel to push it right where the truck is and send it into a spin and then jump on it. And I haven't done that in, I don't know, like 15 years. Yeah. And then the board went out my ass. You shouldn't That's have done it 15 years ago or today. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the hell that thing was. Well, Tony, thank you for your assistance. I, I felt- Yeah, it was I felt, a, you, guys, you guys were really going for it. It was impressive. It's kind of you. I couldn't help but feeling- <laughs> good. I couldn't help but feeling that there was like a Make-A-Wish kid somewhere and I was taking their spot. That I was completely unworthy of what was going on. No, that would be a whole different approach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd be more gentle. Yeah. We kind of wanted you to slam. I got that impression. You were both getting opposing advice. And, uh, you know, that was, that was part of his, his ploy. Yeah, my advice is on behalf of the Jason Ellis Show. It's not about <laughs> right. me. Right. It's about people that… Watch the Jason L show. Hey, you guys want to see Tully and Kevin eat shit skating? I hooked it up. What's that for, Galena? Ramp release. Hey, in case of death. It's just a precaution. Just in case you kill yourself. Of course. <laughs> Safety first. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, we're doing the, the radical surf and turf. <laughs> there used to be a magazine called Warp. Uh-huh. And warp was surf, snow, skate, and if you could do like all three in a day, you were the warp wizard. They're gonna shred. Yeah. Right now. It's all about the pump. So you've got a pump, and when you're down the bottom, the pump has to be really good or you don't keep your momentum. Oh, I'm totally getting to that crack. You really you wanna bet? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> I wanna take that bet. Put your front foot up on the yeah. Maybe a little bit more on the front foot up. No. Yeah, there you go. Backwards. Just 
point where I should have pads on? <laughs> Maybe just go on the flat. Uh-huh. Okay, press that. that front side bonus I'll give you 50 bucks. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're out extreming the extremists right now, just so you know. Don't give up, dude. You got this. That was solid. Everybody on the Jason L show is a shredder. If you were to man blood. Yeah. And it wasn't a bad one. It was just like a little bonk. That's all. Yeah, Tell you, you landed job. on your hip a couple times. I'll be fine. We got a... I got, that, yeah, I got a little burn. Welcome to our world. Wow. Yeah. You did. You're injured from skating. Yep. Well, it's you, part of the game. I don't, it, I don't need to tell you that. Thanks, Michael. No. <laughs> In case you guys were wondering what it's like to be a skateboarder, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ask, just, ask either uh, one of us. Just ask any of us <laughs> at the table. <laughs> and we will fucking tell you. Oh, my God. How's your leg going? Looks good. You look like you go downstairs um, fast. Yeah, that's that's like my one trick that I got. It's pretty I flashy. Can go, I can go yeah. downstairs and make it look normal. Um, it's getting better. It, it's just discouraging when I come here and I feel how truly far behind I am when I stand on a skateboard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm working on walking and I'm getting to, so I can walk without a limp really and being able to balance on this on this uh, leg only. But then I come here and I step on a skateboard and I was like, dude. Right. It's, it's so, I know I'm way early on and I know I, I shouldn't even be skating at all, but I got to try. So the doctor told you you can put weight on it though, right? As long yeah, as the, doctor, the doctor saw my x-rays yesterday and basically said, you're you're healing fine. Your you, your your bone, the way it's healed, looks like you're eight weeks out, and you're only four weeks out. How's that? Just because I've been working on it and getting building back the muscle and the bones attaching and and growing. There's a couple of gaps in the bone, yeah. like where the titanium rod fills the void. Yeah, but they want that to fill in. What does that fill in with? With with bone. With the bone regrows. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I knew it was a stupid question. It was halfway out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to commit. Wait, well, it's, wait, is it… I think it's… Is it callus? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I don't sound as stupid. That sounds good. Okay. But it's filling in. So, I feel good about it. But So, basically, he said, like, if, if he were to look at those x-rays, he would think that I'm way further along. Okay. And so, because of that, I can just go. But when I try to go… it that reality sets in like, oh, you're not ready. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't want to just go for it and ruin it. But it seems yes. like it's healing fast and you're doing a lot of rehab. More than you… It seems like That's something happened day. where you've decided to do a lot more rehab yeah. than you were originally going to. What, what, what made you decide that? I'm trying to get ready for this event in Vegas. So, May 13th. That's the goal. So, everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm trying to expedite all the healing and… Yeah, all day. Like if I'm not if I'm not getting laser treatment, if I'm not doing physical therapy, I'm at home like riding Kathy's Peloton or doing these weird exercises with the exercise ball and like yeah. holding them between my between my thighs and you didn't usually do stuff like that. No. So well, you might be I, fitter I, than I, I you were. I was never training for Los Mania, so 
Right. Fair enough. <laughs> I almost had you a couple of times. Is that is that so? No. No. You've no, never no, had conversations about that. You've I never went been as a spectator. Yeah. You've never been tempted in the slightest. Is there any scenario? No. He at won't all? even hit pads. Uh, I'm not against that, but well, you're against it. No, you kept. You want me to hit you in the face? That's your goal. Well, that would be. I was just thinking about the podcast. That would people would love that. Right, but but I'm saying I, I wouldn't mind hitting pads. But in your eyes, that's just in preparation to punch you in the face. <laughs> if you give him an inch, uh, then course. he'll take hey, a mile. Yeah, he's supposed to be on my side. I'm trying. No, I'm trying. <laughs> to, even just for fun, pull the pad away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> as I'm coming in, as a really, his face, as and a I really, don't have the right reflex to stop it. That's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you've never once, at, in the Ta-da. entire history of your friendship, wanted to punch him in the face. What? Nah. Just asking. I guess that's. I fair. wanted to. I wanted to hit him in the face once to wake him up to catch our flight home, but yeah. he said if I wake him up again, he's gonna kick my ass. So I left him. Where was that? In Vegas. Long time <laughs> ago. Yeah. Yes, a very long time ago, <laughs> and I'm sorry. That's all right. It's, it's not all right. I, it was. It was survival of the fittest. Yeah. Yeah. I did get left. <laughs> Deservingly so. I'm curious. So you two did a show together. 15, 17 years ago, and you're doing one again now, how is it different? Or how is it the same? Um, well, for one, I think we're better at storytelling. And two, I feel like we both come through a lot of personal challenges to have a good perspective on what it all means and how to go about, right? How, mm-hmm. to, how to go about it now and, and how to enjoy it. And I feel like it was... When we were doing our radio show, there's a lot of chaos. Yeah. And it made for funny radio sometimes, but for the most part, it wasn't productive. Right. It's I feel like we're in a spot where, you know, we're older and we're still skateboarding. And for some weird reason, from uh, 40 to 50, like everybody has a different outlook outlook on us still skateboarding. As you're like, whoa, you sure that's a good idea? And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. It's so confusing, but I feel like Tony and I are talking about how why we're why we're doing it. A lot of people find that to be inspiring. Like a older a lot of older guys keep asking me about skateboarding and getting a skateboard and skating again and what would I do if I hadn't skateboarded for 15 years and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I I know exactly what you should do." That's, you know what I mean? Like get a bigger board, don't flip. Like there's a lot of little things that you Need to know about. And they, they, I think they draw parallels with, especially his journey in trying to get back to it, where they're like, yeah, man, I feel you, you know, on my own scale of doing that. I just want to be able to drop in again. And, and mm-hmm. so they, 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 they feel a kindred spirit. But also, um, I think that just we're extracting stories, too, from people and from our past that when you look back on them are so ridiculous and so funny. And we never really had that… Yeah that far perspective on it. It was also fresh right. 15 years ago. So the story gets told in a more honest way because you're like, yeah. I can admit it now. It was 20 years ago, but holy shit. <laughs> Remember this one time we were the dumbest people on the planet? Yeah. And we can laugh about it now. It's not yesterday. Yeah, tragedy plus time equals comedy or right? some, something like that. Yeah, yeah, like the Vegas thing. I was not proud of that. And now I'm like, oh yeah, what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I could just laugh it off now. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the one time you thought about punching me in the face is when you broke your leg and looked up and you thought that I was oh, going no. live on Instagram and you go, are you filming me right now? Yeah, I don't know. I, but I was not in a good state of mind in Fair that enough. moment to know anything. Or, I, you know, I couldn't, I wasn't processing anything and I just saw that you're filming. Me. I was like, why would he do that? But then, of course, as I thought about it, I was like, of course he should do that. Yeah. But at the time, your face didn't say I, that. I feel like, but well, you know what it was? I think it was more that I thought, shit, Jason filmed my slam and has kept it rolling ever since. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. And so to me, it was like, okay, you probably got enough footage now. Yeah. No. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't get that bit. I know. How did that rank like amongst your top slams as far as pain-wise? Um, well, I mean, it's definitely in the top. Uh, the the pain didn't really set in until I had to sit and wait for the ambulance. Oh shit! Because before that, it was all I was so kind of hyped up and and probably in shock too. So 
I was just like, oh shit, broke my leg. Oh, this is gonna take a while. And then and then eventually laid down and realized that my leg was just not gonna stay in one place. And and then it started to really hurt. And I remember Kevin Staub handing me two Advil with no water. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, was like, Kevin putting the I'll Advil in his mouth and, and, and Tony's trying to do the the lip drinking maneuver. Yeah. So he does the lip thing and then Kevin pours the water like across the side of his face. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't, I like, this is not going to help what you've got. It doesn't really going. take the edge off when there's a bone sticking out of your. Yeah. Out of your I don't think we knew that yet. I think that was when the when the medics came and they pulled these shorts up. And that's when I was like, oh, oh my God. Like, yeah. get him painkillers now. So, yeah. To, I mean, between that and breaking my pelvis, those are the, like, those are the top two by far. And then everything else kind of falls away from there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't even know. I thought like a broken femur just meant, you know, six months in a cast. And you um, were walking pretty quick. That was… Yeah, well, I think they just have a different approach now yeah. on, on how they handle, especially broken bones or, or clean breaks like that. And, and he put this titanium rod in and it was basically, your leg is as strong as it's ever going to be. So if you can handle the pain, if you're strong enough, go do your thing. That's oh, what shit. he said all… Th- and I even went yesterday to kind of verify the timeline of what I'm trying to do. And he's yeah. like, you're not going to hurt your leg. So… It's just going to cause pain. You, you, so like, so you're much in pain. Too much danger of like re-breaking it. Just well, as just a matter of how I, much I, pain. You I can would take. have to break a titanium rod to re-break right. it. <laughs> Didn't yeah. they? Because um, you just said that the other slam that was that bad was the the pelvis one, and they found fractures in your pelvis, and they bolted those down, right? They did, yeah. Because he, when he went in for surgery, he saw the old break, and I never had surgery on that. And he just said that that now your leg is so strong, it, it might sort of overpower your pelvis where the crack still is. So they secured that too. So now it's just bionic leg. <laughs> and a bolted down pelvis. <laughs> bolted down. <laughs> Sounds cool. You gotta I make know. it sound cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's like almost a Johnny Cash song. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Give it a couple more years. Bolted pelvis. <laughs> um, but, but I still I have a long way to go to, to really find my strength and to be able to, for instance, go upstairs. I can't go upstairs right now. Uh-huh. Like to, to put my bad leg up and then try to push up from that. Is oh, like, yeah. It's not going to do it yet. kidding me? It's not going to happen. Yeah. So how do you do f- it real fast with the cane. How do you feel about making it to that demo? I mean, I'd still am trying for that. Does it's it just, look good or like I'm sure it, it well, fluctuates? Well, like, like I said, the, the doctor said the, the healing process is way faster than he has seen otherwise. Yeah. But when I stand on my skateboard, it feels like it feels like my foot's dangling. That's my problem right now. Yeah. That's not a way like to I don't really have the the feel of where my foot is on the board. It you feels can't like feel your foot. I can, but it feels like it's it's there's sort of this gray area of what angle it's at. Yeah. And I don't know by feeling because some of the feeling isn't there. So that's that's been the biggest challenge. So does that mean there's like a you you can't feel your whole leg like there's little bits. It's just my foot, and it's just sort of there's some disconnect on the nerves that I they can't explain it to me, but that they think it'll come back. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Ellis. I like this beanie, but I'd rather it was hair. But I didn't know about capes when I was a younger lad, and it started to thin out in the front. Instead of um, going to capes, I shaved my head immediately and i got an okay bald head but it's not great i fractured my skull so i got this weird dick coming out of the back of my head i'd rather have hair and i cannot have that but if you're listening and you have receding hair you can get your hair back and keep the hair you've got if you listen to tully that's right jason think about it van halen chose sammy hagar over david lee roth if david lee roth had had keeps (laughs) <laughs> Are you trying to say that David Lee Roth had a receding hairline, Michael? Because I didn't see it. All How I'm trying you? to say, Jason, is if anyone listening to this Rock is and ready, roll haircut was just really light in the front. I think he just liked the season. Me too. If you're ready to take action and prevent your hair loss, go Nothing to- says rock like a Caesar. 
<laughs> Go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Ellis to receive your first month of treatment for how much? For free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Ellis to get your first month free. What do you have to lose? K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Ellis. Are you feeling depressed or especially anxious? You probably know that you should seek some professional help with that. But what if it just happens so slowly, piece by piece, you don't even realize that you could really use some help? Tell me if any of the following apply to you. You do any teeth grinding, anybody in the room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have any digestive issues that you sometimes think may be tied yeah. to stress? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about uh, having trouble sleeping? Yeah. Uh, how about undereating, overeating? Yeah, sure. Doom scrolling on your phone. What's that? Oh, yeah. When you're just like, I should really put this thing down. I don't know. Let me refresh yeah, that again. I yeah. That. These are, I'm not saying any one of those things means you're depressed, but if a lot of those things apply to you and you're like, yeah, if you think you might need some help, talk to somebody. What's the worst that would happen? And that's why we're so happy to be able to talk to you about our friends at BetterHelp. Yeah. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. Uh, so you don't have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. We are sponsored by BetterHelp, and the Jason Ellis Show listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Ellis. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Ellis. I mean, I had the knee replacement, and on the front of my knee, it just felt like I had a wetsuit on. Like, yeah. if I grab my leg, I can feel that that's my leg. Yeah. But it also feels like there's something over it that's numbing it, that's not yeah. letting me really know. I remember when I first started doing MMA again and I would drop to my knees. It didn't hurt, but it also didn't feel like anything. And it, it I couldn't just drop my knee to the ground. I'm like, I didn't feel any pain, but, I'm, but I also but didn't feel damaged. anything. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm like, I don't yeah. know what's actually happening down there. If that was the bottom of my foot… I think I can kind of understand where you're at. Like, I don't want to put that down. I can't feel it. Yeah, or is it is it on the board? Right. It's, is it you know, facing the right I way? I did a little. Or like you guys a, understand that, right? Well, after this afternoon, yeah. yeah <laughs> totally. I think every skater and MMA fighter has been there. <laughs> but like, I was, showing, I was showing how to do Tic Tacs, right? And it feels like when I lift up that maybe my foot's actually off the board. Yeah, that's not good. That's just, you yeah. know, that, that that's not going to work for doing no. real skating. Nope. So that's what scares me. Is there any precedent for other skaters that have had this injury who can tell you about this rehab? Um, well, Steve Caballero broke his femur, but he also broke his hip at the same time. So his recovery was slower. But he's back. Right. You know, and he broke his ankle after that. Moto. And he's older than me. So, he, you know, he's, he's, yeah. he, he's my inspiration. The craziest part about that is Stevie was there when Tony got hurt. And within… Before the medics were there, Stevie was like, oh, I, I broke mine. And then I broke my ankle like six weeks. And I was like, cool. <laughs> but I think he was trying to give, he was trying he, to give hope yeah, he was on a timeline for yeah. sure. But it, but it felt weird that he's talking about that. I was like, well, I hope I can do that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I just remember going, yeah, I know you broke your leg. Yeah. <laughs> well, we wish we, we got to, we got to figure him out. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But I can yeah, tell. Yeah, this isn't him. a leaky roof, right? Yeah. We, we need to address this. He was trying to, like, because I feel like the silence gets uncomfortable. You know, we're all worried about him. We're worried about him worrying about himself. You know, like, I'm like, man, he's just sitting there in crazy amounts of pain. Somebody should say something, you know, but it's like, yeah, you want to make a joke, get his mind off things? I'm like, it, he ain't laughing. Yeah. There's not going to be a fucking, you're not going to get him to laugh. So just be like, hey, man, it's going to be okay, I guess. We're not very good at that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, but I do. I'm, I am thankful that that not thankful, but but knowing that Steve has been through this yep. and he is close to my age, and he he can skate. Yep. That, that's it. Like that's uh, you know I, I just want to do a tail slide. You said you said that yes the other I day. I know. I do. That's that's it. I want I want to I want to go in. I want to get to the coping and do a tail slide, and I'll feel like I reached a giant milestone. You, yeah. Yes. I feel like it's a giant milestone if you do it at a year from now. But if you do it at that demo, <laughs> you're going to be like Oasis. You're going to be like godlike. I don't know. Yep. Let's see. It's going to be… I'm going to cry. Why does it mean so much to you to not just come back, but to do it 
so quickly? Is it just something specific it's, about it's that event? It's really because we have this event scheduled in Vegas and we have such a good lineup. We ha- you know, it took a long time to organize, it took a long time to secure a date. And we did it, we did it months and months ago to secure the venue, to secure the date, to confirm all the bands and, and um, the skaters. And it's like, I have this sort of lightning in a bottle. And if I had either postponed it or canceled it because of my injury, it would never come together like that again. And so when I saw, when, you know, when I got hurt, when I saw the timeline, it's like, okay, that's, that's my goal is to be able to skate there. I don't know on, on what level it's going to be, but I, I do feel compelled to skate there. I feel it's an obligation to put them on myself. You know what I mean? It's not like there's some, there's some corporate entity that's just like, you got to skate, damn it. Right. We, you know, just like NBA It'd be more than saying, happy, just you're there yeah. and everybody does the demo, yeah. Yeah, and you know, and it's going to be disappointing if I yeah. suck, but maybe that's all I got. I don't know. If you skate and you do anything <laughs> on the coping, it will be the most triumphant day in skateboarding. I'll okay. be like, are you fucking joking? <laughs> okay. I'll and you got to read, guess who's on the microphone? Me. So I'm going to be like, oh, listen, all of you, if I see any <laughs> little kid with their ass still on the seat right now, I'm coming down there to punch you in the head. <laughs> Everybody needs to get up because that's insane. You can exaggerate it for me. Just say, he couldn't even walk yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> An hour ago, he was in a wheelchair. Oh, why, can't, why can't I stand up? Thank you, Joel Osteen. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason's been talking about this Legends demo that you guys did. And I believe that was, is it fair to say, that's sort of an inspiration for this event on May 13th? Yeah. Well, we did a big Vert event in Salt Lake City last year. And the first night of the event, the, the Vert event was, was the modern pros, yeah. younger generation, all competing and, and crazy, crazy skate action. And then the first night we had the Legends demo. So it was Steve Caballero, Christian Osoy, Sandra Diaz, Andy McDonald, Kevin Staub, um, Darren Jenkins, like so many of the legendary skaters from the 80s and all of the street league um, crowd and skaters came from next door because their event had just finished. And it was wild. It was like, the, it was the craziest crowd for a skate demo that I've seen in years. And I've yeah. done a lot of big demos. Yeah. yeah. They the, were so excited. The and crowd was so, more into the Legends demo than the contest by far. the next day. And the contest the next day. Was no crazy. offense to the Legends, but they were doing stuff that nobody in the world can do. And the Legends were doing, you know, I mean, a couple of the old things that they used to do. And the place, I've never been at a, I've never seen a crowd be that loud. Yeah. They were stomping yeah. the ground and I it mean, made this, the, it made, it felt Christian like a Soy did a Christ Air, Steve Cavallero did a Cavallario. Yeah. And the place went nuts. Off its head. Yeah. Um, and so, not that I'm trying to recapture that, but I know that there's a lot of expectation for that here. Because a lot of people who are buying tickets, who are coming and, and traveling for it, are coming because they used to skate. Yeah. Uh, and they want to see the old school dudes. They're probably bringing their kids too, who want to see the newer guys. And also, they want to see the bands and stuff. Because, you know, we've got… Uh, Modest Mouse and Devo and the Descendants and Warish and Cold Cave and you know all these all these incredible skate centric bands. So um, I just want to I want to be there for it. I want to still see it through, and I do feel I, I feel compelled to to make it happen. Do you foresee that becoming like potentially? Have you had conversations say about that being? A tour, like next yes. summer, the summer after. It's yes. so and natural. Absolutely, this is a test run. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big deal. I mean, I, I, I get it, obviously. I mean, you can tell I didn't grow up skating, but it means a lot to people that you do something when you're younger. It's very comparable to like rock and roll. And then you grow out and you, you know that you changed. You know that you don't have what you used to have when you were 16, but you don't know if you have 70% of it or 30% of it. And when you see people who you idolize for flying like superheroes when you were a teenager, still able to do that. I mean, it's the same reason why people still pay a lot of money to go see the Rolling Stones is because it you're like, if they've still got it, then I'm still in the game. Sure, too. but but you know, for me, there there is this sort of um I get that. And and had I not gotten hurt, then I would have been all in with that. Like, all right, you know, people want to come and we're playing the hits. Like I'll do airwalks and I'll do inverts and that's cool. 
Now it's it's a different goal in that I just want to get to some level of skating that's acceptable. Sure. Um, so in in the analogy of like of the Rolling Stones, it would be like if Mick Jones just got through throat cancer treatment and he's just getting his voice back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Where right, you, right, right. You're gonna right. hear it, but it's not gonna be all that. If he does a couple of unplugged tunes, that's cool. I feel like when like the the Legends demo in Utah where people really freaked out was a it was a lot like what you were saying where people were like if he can do it it's almost like I did it with him that's right because I I'm, watched that's what I mean. Stevie yeah. invent that trick and now I'm watching him do it in his fifties and my kids are screaming at it and I've got kids and when I watched him do that the first time I was a kid I didn't have any kids and we're all here still doing that that's right it's it was enough you could tell it was like. Kids thought that dad was cool because dad was from this era and this era looks cool to the kids. So the older people liked it. The young kids liked it. The guys from the street course that are always way too cool to be hanging out at the vert ramp were legitimately fucking pumped. And it was, it was, I've been, I've, I've been at contests for a decade with those, some of those guys, and they were tripping out more at that demo than I'd seen them ever trip out on a vert yep. contest ever. Yeah. Like Kareem Campbell was like, oh my God, like Chris, you could still do that. And I'm yeah. like, he's been the whole time. What are you talking about? Yeah, they, well, they had no reason to to mosey on over yeah. before. So anyway, and, and the, the funny thing is, is that, so the reason my timeline is so short and is for that event, I don't have any other skating events planned through summer, which is, which is weird for me because usually it would have been at least one or two a month. Sure. And Why is that? I don't know. Huh. Um, because I have I have the speaking gig tour uh, planned through Europe, so that was a, a small part of the summer. Yeah. But nothing was coming up. Hmm. I don't know. So, are you feeling like improvements? Like, do you today? Do you feel better than you did a week ago? Oh yeah. Like oh, less, fuck it. less pain. Yeah. Today, I, today least- I could, I could go up one step on my bad leg, and then and then balance on my bad leg for 30 seconds. I couldn't do that yesterday. He walks oh, no noticeably yeah. better every time I see him and I see him at least once a week. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's kind of remarkable. <laughs> like the first time we did a show in here, he's over on the carpet standing on his skateboard. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> and he's like, calm down. And then five minutes later, he's like, I'm going over the vert ramp to, I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, I'm I'm incredibly impressed. Like to be honest, when you were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do that demo," I was like, "I mean, your wife is gonna be so angry at you. That's a terrible idea." And he's like, "Don't say that." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, sorry. I'm not trying to like she, get in your she head." She has definitely tempered my expectations. She's the voice of reason. Somebody needs to be. Yeah, he's crazy, okay. ladies and no, gentlemen. I, I understand. Yes, I understand. But she's like, you just can't expect that you're gonna you're gonna be going. Going Richter. Like I, I said, Tony, if you drop in at that demo, dude, that's it. Sky's the limit. That's you're right. the greatest skateboarder. I mean, you already were, but you you somehow did it again. I'll be like, wow. <sighs> okay. No well, pressure. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. But if you don't do it, who cares? So don't do that to me. I'm just gonna be very proud of you if right. you do it. Right, if you don't you. do it, I'll be very proud of you too. I'm hoping dropping in is a starting point, though. <laughs> That's what I hope. No, I so do I. Okay. So do I. Thank you. I hope you do like inverts and tail slides and all that <laughs> okay. shit. Okay. All right. Thank you. Somewhere in between that, I'll be happy. I was gonna, yeah, but if you start, I don't know. There's a certain <laughs> level you'll get to where I'll be like, hey, hey, slow down. I'm gonna sound like you your have wife. A mic. Yeah, I, I, I would like security. Get Tony Hawk off the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling security on your demo. Yeah, big guy. This guy right here, the tall, skinny one that's limping. Get him. <laughs> Stop him. Like a maniac. All right. We need to send you on your way. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk to some other people. Oh, okay. Thank you for Thanks your help for letting today. us. Yeah, thanks for yeah, job, making these guys so thank great. You. So that, was, that was inspiring. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I'm I, hey, I hope to do a boneless 180. 
Yeah. And a frontside <laughs> kick turn up near the top soon enough. So. I can give you some pointers. Don't. Don't. <laughs> don't. Hasn't he been through I don't enough? want any of your advice on how to fall. <laughs> yeah. Because your falls were like. If you like, want, you can just bend over right now and I can shove a skateboard <laughs> in your ass and you can be just like Kevin. Not. I'm talking about his other falls where it looked like he fell and then someone hit a, a button on a joystick to make him fall again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do have more slams than necessary, it seems. <laughs> I, it's been a very long time since I fell. So I don't remember how to fall in a way where you don't like ding mm. yourself up so I was just like all right I'm just gonna ride the momentum every time I fall well, it was kind of like the fall was over and then you chose to do another safety roll yeah <laughs> yeah there's definitely an unnecessary amount of shit happening for you yeah I'm gonna be honest with you Tony Hawk 99% of the time I have no idea what's going on well we I could roll we it. could not tell that at all right Tony <laughs> hey <laughs> look like you were I'm still I'm saying bonus one eight it's hard it's hard yeah, I got a slow mo one too. So oh fuck yeah! Yeah, you're stoked. Okay, All right. <laughs> I'd say like and describe, but you know it's not. That's show. yeah, wrong one. What this is, is this? Show? This, it's is just this like and and subscribe. Don't die. Do you still do? Don't die. Yeah, thanks, friend. Don't die. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody! This show is sponsored by Liquid Death. It's water in a can, man. It's more than just water and sparkling water in a can. It's also deliciously ah. flavored water in a can. I finally yeah. have a soda in my life that I can feel good about giving to my children. There's no sugar in it. That my children feel good about drinking. The severed yeah. lime. It's got natural citrus juice. I think it's sweetened with like a little bit of agave. It's soda enough for them that they they feel like they're getting hooked up, but it's like responsible enough that I still feel like I'm not a terrible parent. It's the future of beverage. That's right. And uh, you can get free shipping on all your water and your merch. Check out this cool. Keep your keep your liquid death cool the coolest way possible with they a got hoodies like this one right here. They got everything at liquiddeath.com slash Ellis. You got that? That's liquiddeath.com slash Ellis. Or if you cannot wait to have some sweet, sweet liquid death in your life, grab some at Whole Foods 7 Eleven, Albertsons, Safeway, or Amazon. Liquid Death. Get it in you. We here at the Jason Ellis Show are excited to tell you about Good Shop. We are. We were just saying that. I'm uh, Kevin Kraft. Yeah. <laughs> you like? You don't like bad chop, do you, Kevin? No, 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 no. What no. kind of chop Get do that. you like? Give me that Good Shop. Right. What is Good Shop? You might ask. Yeah. It is what America's is it? I might ask online. That. It's America's online butcher. It is. Yeah. Uh, they got flexible monthly subscription plans. So you can get high quality American meat and seafood. They have medium and large plans. You can get excellent cuts of beef, chicken, pork, seafood. As a We've guy tried that eats it. meat. Yeah, how is that meat for you? Excellent. It's delicious. Yeah. I Did love you- it. I'm paying for another box of it. Like we they hooked us up with one so we could try it for the show. I'm paying full freight, obviously using our promo code to get another box. It's like getting <laughs> frozen high protein Christmas. Yeah. What's the promo code? Uh, that's a really good question. Go to goodchop.com slash Ellis 100 mm. and use code Ellis 100 to get, seriously, check this out, $100 off your first three boxes. A hundred bucks. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's yeah. awesome. That's goodchop.com slash Ellis 100. Don't forget the 100. How do you remember it? Remember, I'm going to get a hundred bucks off. You go to goodshop.com slash ellis100 and use code ellis100. You will get $100 off your first three boxes. Good shop. America's online butcher. And we're back. Tony Hawk has left and we replaced Tony Hawk with Chris Cole. You're welcome. That's how it works around here in the Tony Hawk building. Pro skateboarders are a dime a dozen. Actually, that's not true. I booked you. Thanks for being here, Chris. Hey, uh, you're very welcome. I'm happy to represent the street side of things. Right. It's a bummer you weren't here just a little bit earlier because um, we were teaching these two guys how to skateboard. I could have helped. Kevin has skateboarded before, as he will demonstrate. Anybody that doesn't have uh, the Jason L show on YouTube, that'd be a loss because it's free. And then you can see Kevin skateboarding, Tully skateboarding, surfing, you name it. These guys are action sports athletes. But uh, Kevin did some, some pumping and and could, you know, keep his uh, his speed on the at the bottom of the ramp. But then he took it upon himself after that to start ripping into some frontside bonelesses on the flat of the flat ramp, of, oh, of the vert ramp. Nice. Yeah. yeah. 
It they were pretty cool, It was huh? nice. They're pretty entertaining, but but then… It was super nice. So he did a frontside boneless. He tried maybe 15 of them. <laughs> okay. And then, he, and then he made one. And we were all pretty pumped. Oh, all right. Then he went back… <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Was to do bad? more. He's like… I, I could tell his confidence had picked up. Okay. And I, I think he was like… I remember when I used to do this one thing where it's kind of like a no comply… But you just skid the board out in front of you and at four wheel slide 360s Ooh. on the ground in front of you. But because it's the vert ramp and it's slick, oh yeah. When he pushed it, it fucking span off across the flat. He goes running after yeah, it. Like two o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> he goes he goes running after it, jumps uh -huh. into the air, because he's gonna land, but he jumped very confident jump, very high. Oh I was yeah. like, oh board was still spinning, and I was like, that. Okay, like landed Kab like Khabib out of the octagon he, style jump. Yeah, yeah, he kind of eagled right. it. Yeah, he lands with both feet on the front of the nose, <laughs> oh. and the board the board immediately nose dives, which sends him into this. He fucking went for like a knee slide of sorts, but Ooh. as both knees hit the flat of the ramp, I thought that when his knees hit, that they caught. And shot him up to his stomach. But what I didn't know is the skateboard went credit carded him right in the ass Shut crack. Up. <laughs> so he got he got ejected <laughs> from a credit card in the ass that shot him back over onto his stomach. That was supposed to be a knee slide. Yeah. Rude, rude awakening. I don't know what happened. The board went up. I'm I got, so pissed I, somehow, I didn't film it. I filmed everything else except this. I somehow got tangled in the board. Like my ankle hurt. Almost more than my asshole. Really? But the asshole yeah. still wins. I hurt really bad. You were down there for a while to the point where I started to think that all joking aside, you had broke your anus. He grabbed up. I don't know if he <laughs> caught it, Michael, but he, he could tell. He hurt something and then he realized that he hurt his ass. Yeah. Because at first, I yeah. think he might have been grabbing an ankle at first. I thought it was his knees. And then, and then all of a sting. sudden he was like, wait. Ah, and did the, you know, when you roll over and you, <laughs> you clench your butt cheeks to try to like, Stop Overpower the pain. the pain, yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to like, it, block the blood from getting to it, right? So but as you know, maybe Chris, the signal won't go up. It doesn't work. No, There's no. no amount of butt strengthening that you can do to <laughs> yeah. stop the pain of the credit card feeling. I've actually said this before many times, but I would, ra I'd rather get knocked out and wake up in the hospital than like land like credit card really bad and be like clenched up like that in the car all the way to the hospital. Like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, like, I don't want that. I'd rather just be knocked out. Wait, people have gone to I'm gonna, the hospital from credit cards? Yeah, oh, dude, yeah. you'll rip your urethra. Yeah. Like straight up, like if you hit like your dick behind your balls, like with the, with the nose of your board, it'll, you'll need a catheter bag. Ooh. Yeah. Now when you say rip your urethra. I didn't know that. Yeah, remember Stacey Lowry sacked that one rail and, yeah, and yeah. he had like blood on the back of his jeans. Yeah, like you need a catheter back. He had, a, he had to get a catheter for that slam. Yeah. Did his balls get real big? I don't know. Because Mike Yosefer did it. Oh. Mike Yosefer in the 90s okay. was a vert guy, yeah, like me, totally. very vert guy. So him doing very a handrail was a very bad idea. Okay. And it was it was at a street course, so it wasn't like the proper handrail. It was one that was a little easier. Okay. So he thought that he could make a board slide on it. He was on that Jason Jesse board that has no nose. His foot went over the nose and he just sacked himself. Perfect but I guess he, he actually got the balls in between the rail and his taint and he- and Yeah, he, usually you don't get that. Right. He, usually you get like a twist and get the thigh, like right. crease of your butt cheek zone, which is horribly bad He too. mushed his balls and he was in hospital and his balls were like, not a basketball, but bigger than a softball. A grapefruit, yeah. Like That's not good. Right? Yeah. You'd be, you'd have to go to the hospital thinking you're gonna lose I, at least I've hit one. my hip really hard in moto before where my- Dick and balls went purple. I've heard of that, but it didn't. It was weird because, like, the whatever the pelvis bone is on top of your dick, yeah, that's not purple. That's normal. And then when it gets to your dick and balls, it becomes totally purple. And then on the my taint and on my inside of my legs, not purple, just dick and balls. Like I remember, I've told this story too many <laughs> like times. Like all the blood is just going there, just and there, it. <laughs> and it was there for a week or two as well. But I remember telling somebody at a motocross track, I was like, I got my dick is purple. And it was a skateboard guy. 
And he's like, I don't want to fucking say that. Because I was like, you got to say it. And he was like, I don't, I don't got to say it. I don't want to say it. Not even for science? And I just pulled my dick out and showed him. <laughs> and he, because he was like, don't do it, don't do it. And then he went, oh my God. And leaned in and had a really good look. Because it, wa- it yeah. was a thing worth showing people. Now, if memory serves, you were also flashing it on the set of The Woodsman. Is that about the right time? I remember seeing it when you're in the woodsman costume from a pace, a distance of about four, 20 paces. The purple dick. Yeah. Well, we filmed a lot of days of the woodsman. <laughs> it's possible. And I've had a purple dick more than once. Oh, I've had okay. it twice. I saw, maybe I didn't see the purple dick. Maybe yeah. I saw a purple dick. Old uh, purple dick, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it was twice, 50 years. It's not that bad. Yeah, Can we get that's back true. to the ure- to the urethra tearing? I'm yeah, really yeah. interested. Yeah, so what I'm picturing when you say yes. that is what I imagine happens to a face if it gets curb stomped only with a pee I, hole. I think it's I think it's more of like there's a lot of delicate junk in your junk, and so if you smash too hard, oh, then you're gonna need like you're gonna need assistance. So not the actual like pee hole, but the tube, the that tube that runs, runs all the down, way through. yeah, because it, it does go down your dick and like. Through your taint, right? And then yeah. up your ass? Because there's still dick. Right. <laughs> You've got there more, there, there's more dick. I, know, I, 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 I measure from there. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I measure from there. <laughs> That's dick. I'm 10 inches from my <laughs> asshole to my end of my dick. If I can feel urethra, that's dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about more like, to further the face analogy, more like breaking your windpipe than breaking your mouth. Uh. Yes, but uh, okay. So one time uh, I got a board that smashed me right here. Um, and and it, like up yeah, underneath it, your it nose. Hit underneath my nose, broke my nose, but also, um, you know that little dangly thing that holds your tongue in? Oh, the right? uvula? No, that's the dangly thing that, that your gag reflex. Oh, the little webbing on the, the bottom, bottom of your webbing teeth. on the bottom yeah. of your tongue. You also have one holding your lip together. Yeah. And when you, mm. like, it hit that, it cut that, oh. and that is hollow. And so when I went like this, you could just see up into my brain. Like it's just a hole forever, right? And it bleeds forever. That's like ripping your your, your, your urethra. Okay, so how do they fix that? Is it just They can either throw a stitch in or they just go, hey, don't like smile too hard for a couple hours and chill. Wait, this is ridiculous. I'm so fucking pissed at evolution now. You're telling me that that tiny little wimpy piece of of flesh is the only thing keeping my brain from the elements? Yeah, like it's just a hole forever. I don't know how scientific that is, but if you think <laughs> about your sinuses, like that's just a big old cavern, right? Ears, nose, throat. Yeah. And that thing just goes straight into the, into the abyss. Jason's deep in thought, so I'm wondering if he has some sort of purple dick analogy for this. No, I'm leaving my dick out of this one. Okay. But I have seen a guy who had cancer and he had, or well, maybe he shot his face off, I can't remember. But he had a fake jaw, this part, and he had a fake piece of skin that went over this part. Ooh, and skyfall. A, and, a, and a fake top part of his teeth. Yeah. And, and I saw a video where he took it all out, and you could see inside his mind. Wow. Yeah, like uh, like when Javier Bardem pulls out his like mouthpiece in, in uh, oh, 007 yeah. Skyfall. And his face just sags. And his face just all yeah. sags out. And- it was kind of like that. Oh. But real. Oh. Woof. There's people that have um, rubber face covering because they don't have a face from mm. shooting their heads mm-hmm. off or stuff like that where they've received a yeah. blow in the craziest of areas. Yeah. But they're still alive. Like a, like a, like a hole out of here and a, and a part of the jaw missing and no teeth and no nose. And there's like a – because I watched this life. guy put it all back in. <laughs> That's a tough life. Yeah, he seemed like he was doing okay. Well, probably a better lease on life. Like, yo. That, right? That After sucks. the initial blow of like not having a face, yeah. then just knowing like, man, I can't believe I'm still alive. Yeah. Because it must remind him of death every time he takes it all out. Because it looks, he looks dead. Yeah. When he takes it all out, it's like, oh, do you need assistance? You know what I mean? Because you look yeah. like you're going to die. Yeah, don't take it all out. Put it back in. But he's, I think you have to take it out to clean it. For oh, sure. If you sense. don't clean it, yeah. you're, you're going to die. Get infected. Yeah. Right? <laughs> got to air out your you're brain. Gonna, you're going to be for oh, real. Oh, man. Uh-huh. But I feel like you got to, like, maybe you squirt some lube spray up there because I feel like 
You don't want too much air getting to your brain. Yeah, what about yeah, you seal what about off. you need the brain juice? There's a lot juice. to learn in this episode, you guys. How can there be a direct line <laughs> to your brain that, that the brain juice coming out? Well, it did it, it was bleeding for three and a half straight hours. You're saying yeah. that you it didn't stop. brain juice. Your smart water came out? I don't know. Turns I out mean, that shit's not real, Michael. <laughs> Liquid death is though. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. So as I like a like a street skater on your level, how yeah. often can you expect to rack your nuts? <laughs> is uh, it like once a month? Like you once, try not once to, a year? No, you really try not to. Like oh, you, I believe uh, it. I think like when you get to, I guess like what you're saying, my level, which is a lot of that is risk assessment. You know, you get to this point in your career through risk assessment. If you're just fearless, you're gone because you blew it. Um, so I definitely weigh out the slams, but dude, hitting your nuts is not the worst thing. Like you hit the outside of your thigh, like up by your hip on a handrail. I'd rather go nuts. Like straight no up ribs on a, on a, on a rail, rather go in between the legs for sure. Oh, like it sucks in there, but like there are some spots that are not good. <laughs> yeah. Balls and dick can kind of take a hit. And it's like funny. Not, it's very rare that you have to get like a, a surgery from a, a dick impact. Yeah. And also but if you hit your ribs, that's a you're you're gonna have some time off. Sure. Yeah, you can separate the those ribs are pretty from shitty. cartilage and stuff. Ribs are pretty oh. shit. Yeah. I would have to say. Like when I fall on my ribs, if I don't get another bone in the way, yeah, that's usually some sort of horrific. You know, what I mean, I can't fucking laugh or or turn sideways for three weeks or some shit. Like it's yeah. not. Like if I hit my leg real hard, it's it's sleeping kind of okay. probably sucks. It's super resilient too, which is kind of crazy because every time you hit your nuts, like the commoner will say, "Like, oh man, like good luck having kids," and you're like, "Dude, it's not going to phase that at all." Right? You should see me fuck. I made a kid by smashing my balls really hard on something. So how the fuck are you trying to tell me that's going to stop it? That's how they're made, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm just strengthening <laughs> up my not whole system. system. I'll just have tougher kids. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Being in this studio and talking about fucking hard is like for a second there, I was like, wait, don't say that, Jason. Oh, wait, it's your show. Yeah, Go it's, ahead like a, and, it's like a snow day. Go ahead and say that. It's a yeah. snow day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you try not to nut rack your nuts, though, like just as far as pain goes, because. You just want to be able to skate every day or every other day or even every weekend. You just want to be able to skate. And the older you get, the worse that that type of slam heals. You know, you have to keep like lowering that 100% bar. Because you'll never feel 100%. With every yeah. year, you like Jamie Thomas said it best. He was like, I feel 100% for 40 whatever he is, you know. So it's like, I feel 100% for this. Yeah. And, and I was like, that's actually brilliant because you're never going to feel like you did at, you know, 24. Nope. No. Like that's just not real. Do you do you like HGH or anything like that? No. What's Are you up? on steroids? No. Why not? I don't know because I don't get steroid tested. Like I could totally do that, but you I could. think I'm too lazy to figure out like, where do you get the steroids? You know what I mean? Like, but I wouldn't know. there be some benefit if you looked into it? To, like, what if you did feel, For you're, sure. not, you're not going to feel 24, but you might feel 34. For sure. I yeah. think that there is definitely like, like people get stuff like, um, you went and got stuff for your knee, right? Going like back platelets again. or whatever. Stem um, cells. Stem cells. Yeah. So it's like, that shit seems tight. I would just have to actually like look into it. And I haven't. I, I get it. Like I, I did it when it started to hurt. Uh, like when my, it started to ache without um, landing on it. So I was like, yeah. I'm just in pain for no reason. So totally. then, I, then I was willing to go to Columbia and get stem cells. But if it had been, if I go to Columbia and get stem cells, I'll have more balance because my knee ligaments will be tighter. It's not worth it to me. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was, it was, I was like, yeah. oh my God, am I going to be, am I going to be an angry old man on painkillers? Totally. Yeah. And you I'm don't like, want to I can't that. do that. I'll yeah. go insane. Well, it's funny because what, what happens a lot of times is people are like, you know, fuck it. And they're just like, the, you'll wreck your body for your craft. Yeah. But like, you have to also do that risk assessment. And because there's going to be a whole lot of years where you still want to be able to, you know, walk 
Yeah. You know, like there's going to be a lot of years after what you do that you're going to want to still live a life that's worth living. Right, but if you take care of yourself, that's the other thing I noticed that, that totally. it's, it's the other end of the spectrum. Like, yes, I've done a lot of stuff where I've broken things. And yes, the older I get, the more arthritis, tendonitis is going to start creeping in and it's going to be harder Itises. for me to just walk around. But versus you just eating meat and cheese for the last 50 years and you didn't do any activities to hurt your ligaments, I'm better off than you. I'm fitter For than sure. fucking 90% of 50-year-olds that I meet. You are, bro. Wouldn't last 10 seconds against me in anything. Yeah. And and also in the pain game. I don't, it's not that painful to be me. Like if I, if yeah. I eat shit, then yeah, I'm in a lot of pain. So would you be? Oh, Quite frankly, sure. if you were 30 and you took some of the slams, I'd, you'd, you too would be in a lot of pain and it would go away. Yeah, and you'd be around another day. Like I really feel like the average fifty-year-old American is so out of shape that, yeah, breaking an arm yeah. might be like a horrific thing for you, or even worse. Like when people that are out of shape tweak a back, that's worse. Like if you break an arm and you're just some dude, the arm will heal. And if you do, you wear the cast, it just heals, and you've back got your arm is back. Bad. But if you hurt your back, like you pinch a nerve and you're, you're out of shape and you don't go get it worked on or you do like two times and then you go back to your old thing, that will be like some nagging thing for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I feel like if you're yeah. an athlete, sure, you've done a lot of damage to your body, but you handle the injury in a far more professional manner. Like for one, Absolutely. when I go see a doctor, it's probably a doctor that's done this a million times on people like me. I'm not going to like Jimmy no. the doctor in Hermosa Beach to do yeah. a knee replacement. Like I'm going to one of the better yeah. knee I, replacement guys in the world because I know. Pediatric doctor. Right. <laughs> because we know all these people. We'd be crazy not to. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you, you, yeah, you want to go to the dude that works on like if you hurt your shoulder, you want to go to the MLB pitcher shoulder guy. Right. Right. For exactly. Sure. Right. I kind of developed a theory. Rule of thumb. It's like somebody, somebody who takes care of themselves at 30 – might not be a physical match for a 20-year-old that just doesn't give a shit and shows up day of, but I'll take a 40-year-old that takes care of themselves <laughs> over a 30-year-old that doesn't. Yeah, I think that there is that, like it's not an even scale. There's definitely yeah. some peaks and valleys in there. Right. For sure. But you, you, you're kind of right, and I feel like if you move it up again, yeah. even more so. Hell yeah. Like you get 40s to 50s. If you haven't been taking care Sell of yourself, death. 40, you're really starting to feel it. For sure. Like, I feel like guys that have just, like, been yeah. out of shape for 20 yeah. years, like, ever since well, their metabolism changed at all. Yeah. And if, and, if you don't, and if you don't believe us and you're listening to this podcast, go through Facebook and check out the people that you graduated high school with currently and see what's up. Man, I wish I had Way friends different. when I was a kid. I can't. I don't remember. I didn't have. I'm sure you could just go in your yearbook and be like, who, who are you supposed to feel better than? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything yeah. to base it off. I'm like, who do I know from school? <laughs> like, I don't know a school person. Like, that was uh, not a school person. You got a yearbook playing around anywhere? No. Like, I didn't. There has to school. be a Facebook page on this. There's business. no way there's a Facebook page from. Yeah, there from is. people that are 50 from Sandringham that went yes, to school. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Not for your yeah. grammar school, but you went to what? Sandy Tech? Yeah, so yeah. Based on that if you go to Sandringham Tech Facebook page and look whatever year, like figure out 17 years or 18 years from when you were born, you'll yep. see yep. the because, kids. I mean, you may not yeah, recognize because the there names. Were, there but, were reunions oh, yeah. that you weren't notified of, just uh, like I wasn't notified of all the like class oh, reunions wow, from whenever. Reunion. You know what yeah. I mean? I just went to mine. Everyone's in jail. There's no way they're in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's in jail. They, look, if anybody made it out, and, 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 when I, and when I mean out, I mean out of prison. Yeah. <laughs> I will be very, I will be fucking surprised. The whole name of the school is Sandringham Tech for the criminal league. <laughs> <laughs> they're all still in that school. <laughs> that school's just a prison. I had no idea. It's like an Arkham meets yeah, trade school. Man, nobody had this any future plans. I remember that. Like, yeah, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, You're like, yes. Not live at my parents' house. I feel <laughs> yep. like if any of them achieved that, yeah. that would be great. Two chicks at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I had that idea yet. That would have been, you would have been my best yet. friend. I would have nominated you class president for that idea. Oh, this guy knows when, what he's talking yeah. about. When I'm class the... president, all of you will have two chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we, you would have been hoisted and carried around the footy oval. We would have loved you. Just the cover of the yearbook was just a high five. Yeah. This high guy five. knows what we're thinking. Hey, there's Cab. This place is crazy. I think it's his leg there. Yeah, probably. Usually a bunch of. That's his leg. Old boss. <laughs> I know that leg. Anywhere. I saw his face earlier. I'm pretty sure it's him. Yeah. I mean, he is wearing half cabs, which is yeah. the longest running signature skateboarding shoe in skateboarding. All right. Just wow. And he has fly. his cab pads on. Yeah. It's a, the last time I was here was for your 40th birthday, Jason. 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So it, where the hell were you for the 50th? Right. <laughs> were you there? I was probably playing was video there. games. I was there. Yeah. I think my mother-in-law was in town. So I was partying pretty hard that night of my own. Right? Yes. No, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Hard partying, for sure. Yeah, there yeah. wasn't a lot of hard partying, but this we did place, skate. This place is a, uh, I'm sure you guys talk about it all the time, but it's pretty wild that every day there's the who's who of, of vert, like uh, royalty is out there just shredding together. It's, it's pretty amazing. crazy. The other day I skated here with Colin, Colin McKay. <laughs> And he, we got asked that there was some, the better younger guys were coming and Colin goes, man, I wish we could just skate by ourselves for a little bit. And I was like, I, I don't, I'm used to skating with people that are way better than me. And I was like, yeah, that does sound cool. And then Galena was like, I just told to him, you guys got it for an hour by yourselves. And, and he was right. It was way cooler to skate just he and I versus that is having cool. all the, other good dudes there because it, yeah. it is you do feel a little bit like you know this is your time i shouldn't even be here yeah a little bit of like like let me be quick and get off the ramp yeah. so that you can get your runs in yeah a little bit but obviously that's not how, how they think but that's not how they think at all but having older guys that haven't skateboarded and are trying to get back into it and it's just you two and you're both because colin and i are both at that yeah. level where we were way better and now we're not and we're like just trying to like figure out how to work it without getting hurt yeah yeah that takes a minute but we we're always good at having fun while skateboarding because to, to me the last time colin and jason ellis skated just those two people we had the music playing same music that we were playing when we were skating last week Sick. With the same thing, like we keep ourselves amused while we try to make something. Yeah. But like when we're not making it, we're making the day. Like we were both laughing about something stupid. Yeah, you want to have some. Every fucking time. Yeah, you. I mean, that's pretty much all we do in life anyway is try to like what's our take home for the day. Right. You want your take home that you like you go home and you feel good about something. And then the next morning you wake up and you try to get that take home again. The heaviest part about it. I think I'm okay with saying this, but Sick. Colin had uh, he had like a bit of a chest pain feeling because he's he's got like a heart arrhythmia thing that mine's worse than his. But so we're skating and he goes, I feel a bit of a chest pain. I'm like, fuck off. And he's like, no, it's not that big of a deal. And I go, yeah, my doctor says, because I, I was like, it's not a real sharp pain. It's just like you feel it, right? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I told my doctor about those too. And he's like, yeah, they're not chest pains. You don't have to worry about that. And he was like, yeah, that's what my doctor told me too. And then he walked over to the other side of the ramp and I was on this corner and I kind of, I I wasn't crying, but I definitely got like verklempt about it where I was like, well, we're going we're gonna to skate. Like we're going to keep skating. You had a chest pain and I, I bonded you with you about also having chest yeah. pains and we both have had doctors tell us that it's not too much to worry about at this point. But yes, that is kind of sometimes people get chest pains in their 50s and, I, and I'm like, but we're up here. Skate, we're all yeah. old and haggard looking, but we're up here, man. Like, and, yeah. and, and, and it also made me feel like maybe this is the last time Colin and Jason ever skate together by themselves. But you can't ever think about that because, well, I, you can. I did. But you shouldn't. Um, only because that doesn't change the inevitable. It, it just, didn't. It just puts a sour taste. It's in different for me it. now, Chris. I look at it as a beautiful thing. Oh. Like I thought about it well, and I was good. like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But right now we are skateboarding after all this time. Yeah. You and I are skateboarding right now and we're 
laughing about Ricky Martin music or some shit like that. And like we used to when we were kids, we're still kind of kids. Like it felt, it felt good. Yeah. I think that's a healthy attitude. It's like, uh, you just appreciate the day that when you have something and then you don't have it and then you have it again, you, you just know someday goodbye will be a farewell. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. That's, uh, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine in the music industry yesterday about that because everybody that is able to go and see a live show now because COVID and everything shut down for so long, we got a moment to like really think about like what live music meant to us. And while it was gone, we got that hard reset of like, you know what, when this comes back, I'm gonna appreciate it way more. Mm. And I'm kind of like, I'm not happy that it happened, but if I'm looking on the bright side, the bright side is that now I have a, a greater appreciation for those moments you know, to be yeah. and see somebody kick it live and kind of the gravity of the fact that we've always liked to see people kick it live. Like yeah. medieval ages, it, you know, there's like a guy out there with like a hand harp and he's just, he's kicking it live and people would gather Or around. beheading. I mean, we still do that too. We just do it in a very different way. Like uh, when somebody yeah. dies, we're like, how did he die? Like we all, and we all want to know, like, what happened because we're all scared <laughs> we're all like shit you know it's yeah. a weird thing that we do we do behead people still huh uh they still do we're better than that now who's they Wait, well england do they do they put people in the guillotine in england to me if you tell me there's a beheading no video idea. i don't think it was somebody who was in the stocks and the queen and queen elizabeth put her thumb down i'm picturing sorry to stereotype what part of the middle east did this video come from Oh. That's my first guess. Yeah. A, a, a place war torn for longer amounts of time. It's not in the middle of the track homes near the playground. Everybody like puts down their Starbucks cup and goes and watches. If you're near We're not a beheading, it, it's the it's the worst part of town. <laughs> Even the guy that Spoke, spoken like a dude that is two hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> Even the guy that's in charge of that town is having a bad day. Yeah, I can't imagine that you like you go home and you're like, like, hey, honey, I'm home. No, big day. There's no honey. No, no. If you're near beheadings, you don't say honey. You don't have a honey. You don't put honey on your in your tea with no. lemon. Like nothing sweet. Well, yeah. now, Ain't that nice nowadays? But not. This is a, a darker subject. It's a little <laughs> bit closer to home. But in the last 100 years in America, people were not beheaded, but they were lynched, and people brought picnics. That's true, Facts. dudes. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. We think about uh, 100 years. We think about it as like oh, people live to 100, so that's only one generation ago. And you're like, no. People have kids in their mid-20s to 30s, yeah. so there's another, there's another round. Like, so, so in 100 years, what do, you, what do you got, like three turnovers there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Like a lot changes in each turnover. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that like people still watch Snow White, and I bet you somebody got lynched and somebody brought a picnic the same year that Snow White came out. So it's not that far away. Totally. Well, yeah. we haven't been recording history for that long, really. You know what I mean? Like, I thought about this a way different subject. I thought about this with, like, shark migration. Like, how long have we been charting that for reals? You know what I mean? Like, when a shark comes up and attacks somebody, like, like, we're like, that doesn't ever happen. Well, like, how, like, what if there's, like, a migration pattern that's much longer than what we've even been recording? You know? Oh, right. Yeah, maybe we're due to just get fucking eaten alive. Where the, psycho, the, the psychos come out of that one yeah. zone every, nice. you know, hundred years. Do you see that new Shark Megalodon movie on Netflix? Oh, my God, no. So good? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm pretty sarcastic. But it's, but it's, I think, what's the movie, Michael, where the aliens are bugs and, and they kill the bugs and it's Men like, in Black. Nah, it's real cheesy. And it's like, oh, it's making fun of itself because it's that ridiculous. Mars Attacks. Critters? Nah, uh, the, do you want to live forever? The guy oh, from, Starship Troopers. Yeah, sure. Starship. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Starship Troopers, you could, they made it to be stupid, right? Yes. Like they knew that they were doing that. No doubt. This one, it has to be that. I love it. I'm there. It too. has to be that. Okay. And There's it's new? no it way. Out? Yeah, it's, it's a new movie on that. Netflix about, um, about 
megalodon sharks and the acting is so fucking bad nice. that it has to be on purpose. I refuse to believe that anybody I can look this up. is really doing what, what they're this. saying they're doing. And there's just so many scenes in it where I go, okay, they know what they're doing here, obviously. Yeah. Have if you, I'm wrong, wow. Well. Have you done any acting, any of you? Yeah, I was in uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop. And, Sick. And, 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 and uh, the biggest acting role, the biggest speaking role that I had was later on put in the uh, deleted scenes on DVD. Okay. So that leads me to believe that not good. Not you were actor. featured in a scene that was in the theatrical cut, right? With the tanning bed. Yeah. I feel like I saw that in the movie theater. Yeah, okay. but that wasn't much talking. True. Well, I, 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 the- I wonder this just because I, I wonder if people think that they would be a good actor or if they just know, like, no way. Yeah. I I'm pretty sure I- that I could, I could play myself right. pretty be, good. You might be surprised. I think a lot of people suck at being themselves. Yeah, I guess if it's, well, I guess if you're playing yourself, but you're saying things that you would never say. I just think about like shit, like public service announcements when you're a kid and it's like some kids are playing basketball in the park and they're like, Magic Johnson. And then all of a sudden totally. he's like, hey kids, did you eat corn today? Because <laughs> you should eat corn. They always <laughs> seem so unnatural just being themselves. Totally. But I feel the- like I would be a horrible actor. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I don't know why. I just think like, when I was a kid, I actually wanted to be an actor. What yeah. what thwarted that dream? Uh, reality. reality, yeah. <laughs> Just reality. Fuck, yeah. I hate reality. Oh, man. I have too annoying out. of a face. It's like too pointy yeah. and like ratty. Nobody would yeah, root right. for my yeah, character. I agree. So. Shit yeah, but you could play that. Right now. But you could play that <laughs> character, you yeah. know what I mean? Probably, yeah. I could be like the snarky guy who like pisses off the main character. Yeah. If it ever came to blows, the main character would be able to beat me up very easily. Yeah, you yeah. look like a guy who could have had like a burger smeared in your face on a Nickelodeon <laughs> show. Yeah. <laughs> I think we could all. I think we all could, have, could be decent actors. Because it's just, it a, it's just a matter time. of like really putting in the work, you know. Yeah. We we should see if we can like come up with like a script or something we can write where we don't need like big props, scenery, anything like that. We don't need and, to and cry. Put our, yeah. Put our put our skills. Oh, I to disagree. The test. I think that we should we should make a movie where we all have to cry. <laughs> In a scene that doesn't that you doesn't know, need it. Do you, do you think he could cry in in my movie? Uh, if you write a movie, I'll do my best. Right. I'm not saying do your best. I'm saying cry. Do you think you can or do you think it would be a waste of a day trying to film Chris Cole cry in a movie scene? I think it would be a waste of whoever watches a day. I'm not asking that. I'm asking. Do you, I think I could pull it off? Yeah. If yeah. I had, we had a couple of hours. Yeah, I have deep sadness. Your lines are fucking, because that's all it is, deep right? Deep sadness, yeah. Just me too. Just think of like the worst thing. Yeah. Start crying about that and say your lines, right? Yep. And then you, you really think you could do it? I mean, I'm up for a challenge. We should do it. You know? I'm not, I'm we not, should have a scene I'm together. I'm not scared where we, to do it yet I, until the cameras are on. And where I I'll break up with you and you cry about it. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like I can change. Yeah, and I'm like, it's too late. Knowing I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up on me. Don't give up on us. I'm like, I am. I'm giving up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I respect your decision. Yeah. But I'll cry that, forever. That, that's what we that's written in the script. See, I'm already res- about to cry. That you ah. respect my decision. <laughs> While you're crying, you say, I respect your decision. <laughs> so I guess I'll leave. And I'm like, good then, leave. Bye. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I respect it a little bit less since you're acting like that, but <laughs> that's fair, but still you gotta go. Firm but fair. Yeah. That's that's me when I break up with people. Uh, Very firm and fair. Very. I think is this a show? Yeah, we're. I think we're done. All right. Uh, I feel like we tackled the tough subjects. Right. We did accidentally get on a couple of tough ones, but we recovered <laughs> and got balls. out of there. Yeah. What do you do now? Is it just Chris Cole skating all the time? Are you liquid death in it? You work yeah. in there, or yeah. they, they didn't get you in the office, did they? Uh, no, I'm on the lifestyle marketing team. Nice. And uh, and then I also am full time skateboarding, and then I make uh, wooden items and furniture and things like that in my free time. You got a hobby? I or do. Are you, is that your business? I, I, well, I do both. I'll take commissions. I'll build furniture like dressers and nightstands. and you Like know, Ron Swanson. It, it, actually, pretty accurate right there. <laughs> Who's Ron Swanson? It's a character on Parks and Rec. Yeah. Like Nick but Offerman? The, Nick uh, Offerman. Yeah, the actor actually does like do woodworking and has a website where you can buy like 
he's furniture very good. and stuff he's, he's made. He's very good. And, oh. I, and I've, I've definitely hyper-focused on that um, in the recent years. And I'm like really into it. Do you do coffee tables? Yeah, I make tons of coffee tables. Coffee totally. tables are much faster than anything with drawers, you know? Yeah. Have you ever made a coffin? I made a coffin a long time ago, Sick. actually, but like just as like a Halloween prop. But yeah. this is long before I knew how to like do proper joining. Now you would make a sick coffin. Now I'd make a wicked coffin. Oh fuck I yeah! Can, that's like measured for the like wood coffin expansion. Would be pretty badass. You know? Yeah, yeah. And maybe I should offer a coffin. I might I'd rather get that. a Chris Cole coffin than a than a, a kiss, kiss coffin. coffin. Yeah, yeah, way more. Fuck yeah. Fan way till the more. end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so into kiss. It's totally my shit. Yeah, but they didn't. There's no way they help make those coffins they're selling. No, you they're would not make getting your there. own I, coffin. Yeah, I have wood glue all over my it's hands. Way more currently. respect in that. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking about buying one of those and putting kiss in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, at least you won't have to house it for too long. Right. Sick of those fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I'm like, I love Kiss. I love Metallica. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, would you guys go home? You know. Not Metallica. Eh. Kiss can go home. I'm just saying, not. I'm like, don't go on the road on on my account, you know? Like, but you want to do I'm a going. gig every now and then? Do a gig, but don't go on the road and burn yourself out. Go go hang out with your, your wife or something. Yeah, one-offs would be great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, one-off concerts in their hometown. Like, we're doing this. It's going to be in September. Yeah. Travel here. I like what Billy Joel's been doing. I know he's toured a little bit, but for a minute there, he just, all he was doing was he lives in New York on, in the Hamptons and he would book one night a month at Madison Square Garden yeah. and he'd helicopter in and he said, I will be at Madison Square Garden one night a month until it doesn't sell out. Wow. Perfect. Wow. And he just shows up and he plays the hits for people. Oh yeah, he cuts the shit, plays the hits. Yeah. I mean, he's also like, he's got wall to wall hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are there are some bands where you go and you forgot. You forgot how many hits. Like you go to a Blink One Eighty Two concert, it's wall to wall hits. Like didn't know it was gonna happen, showed up, it happened. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and disagree. <laughs> <laughs> if they had any hits, but I get it. Yeah, but they did. They got a lot of songs. <laughs> a lot of catchy songs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. I like the one with a lot of energy where he sings through his nose. Yeah. Okay. Not like one. all the other ones. <laughs> I know that one. Yeah, That's cause... exactly what Dane says. So maybe it's an Australian thing. He's not Australian. Yeah, but you are, and you're you talking know what it mad is? shit. He's a he's a music connoisseur, and 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 I'm I know what's up too. Oh, okay. Yeah, not me. No, you don't. Obviously, it's fucking the totally kidding. It's like totally in my shit. It's like, <laughs> it's like my superpower. <laughs> music knowledge. I've seen you at a lot of concerts. Yeah, it's, we we it's tend to thing. go to the same shows. Yeah, it's my thing. It's uh, I felt like I smoked the whole pack for a while though. Like, like before COVID, I had, I was at one concert in particular, and I was just like, dude, I am burned out. I have gone to way too many in the short period of time, and I need to like, I need to pump the brakes. And it was, I'm happy that COVID hit, and I was like, you know what, I'm ready to get back in there. Yeah, just always out there watching music all the time. Uh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I think yeah. every metal show I've gone to in LA or the LA area, I've I've seen you. I go to a lot. Uh, I go to a lot. Yeah. Still playing? Yeah. But like I'm not good. Yeah. I don't play with other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I could I feel like I could be a good like sort of rhythm guy, the second rhythm guitarist. Yep. The guy who plays <laughs> when he kind of feels like it. Yeah. I got that. Yep. <laughs> like Bruce Springsteen without the singing. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, I love Bruce Springsteen. Well, we'll Have you listened it. to his audiobook? Born to Run? Nah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I'm gonna I, I wanna disagree with you on a lot of things you're saying <laughs> right now, but I'll let it yeah, maybe it is good. Dude, give it a try. I give it a try All just, right. just for like <laughs> just to be like a contrast of what you're already thinking. Give it give it a whirl. All right. You know what I mean? Have you heard his podcast with the president ex president? No. Me neither. But I heard that's a I didn't hear anything. Is that a heater? I don't know. They both do a show together though, right? They did a limited run show. Oh. Yeah, it was that's like eight, over. eight episodes or something. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's kind of like a book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would listen to an audio book in the car. I would do that. Yeah, it's a great it's a great place to listen to audio books. All right. Where's a great place to find Chris Cole? Um, 
through zero skateboards. And also I have a, I have like a website that I just threw together with my furniture stuff. That's ccolonco.com. That's where you find me. For uh, all your bespoke furniture needs. Yeah, that and just, you know, Instagram, Chris Cobra Cole on all platforms. Right. Is that what is, was that the good selling point? Did I do it? I think so. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sold. Thanks for having me. I like you guys. Yeah, we it's like cool you. hanging out. Thanks for uh, last minute just showing up on a whim. I appreciate that. Dude, uh, I'll always answer a text from you. Makes it seem like we really know people around here. You do. Uh, like and subscribe and check out the Patreon shows. Patreon forward slash Ellis Mate for four other shows a week on there. I do two solo and then we do two Jason L shows on there. And then we have bonus content that goes up every now and then. Like for instance, uh, Jonathan Freeman did an interview and we didn't get video. So we're just going to give you that for free on Patreon. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Don't die. Free, man. If you what? want more Jason Ellis show, Jason. sign up for their Patreon oh, at patreon.com slash Ellis me no, uh, for a two hour show every Tuesday and Wednesday to watch full episodes of the Jason Ellis show. Subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Jason Ellis show. And don't forget to follow the crew on Instagram at Wolfmate, at Tollywood, at Kevin Craft, at Underwear Wolf, and at the Jason Ellis show. 